Welcome. The purpose of these brief webinars are to provide targeted, in-depth information supporting knowledge and application of the Illinois ECE competencies. The focus of this webinar is mapping competencies through programs. In this webinar, we'll discuss how competencies can map through programs in terms of degrees and certificates. We'll explain how mapping embeds the ECE credential into your program. We'll look at how the competencies are sequenced through your program and how that impacts student pathways. So competency mapping um, is really an opportunity to take the competencies at the appropriate levels uh, in your program and decide what courses, in what course that competency is truly introduced, where it is dug into deeply, and where the competency is assessed or evidence of proficiency is collected. Where, so it really is this whole sequence of how do we know how do we know students know? How do we know they can? Or how do, know, how do we know that they can actually lead or advocate that, depending on what level of a competency you're talking about? So, and the reason we, the reason we're kind of talking about this mapping in these three categories of um, where where the competency is introduced, where it's developed or dug into, and where it's assessed or proficiency is ascertained, is because um, sometimes we can be guilty of. Um, saying, oh, well, we introduced this human growth and development concept or whatever it is. We, we do that in every course. That's threaded through every course in our program. And we understand that it is. But at, at some point, you really have to think about which course is really, truly responsible for the introduction of this competency. And where do we dig deeper into it? And where do we assess? And, and that also helps you to see that perhaps you can um, that ma making sure that we're sequencing our courses correctly for where we're introducing things and that we're not developing or digging in or expecting that of a student before we ever introduce it or that maybe all we ever do is introduce a concept. All we ever do is introduce, for example, stage theory and over and over and over they're learning these different stages but they never dig deep and they never apply them. And that really bring this mapping activity or this mapping um, really shows that to you in, in a deep way. So so I'm get, we're going to show you a mapping document in a minute that will help you uh, actually do this with any certificates or degrees or programs that you offer. Once you've done the competency map, again we're going to show you that document in just a second, once you have done a competency map it really does help you examine um, how the map aligns with your plan of study. So it, it really would be important to take out your plan of study at that point and say, okay, we said we introduced this here, we develop it here, and we assess or um, look, look to see if a student really knows or can do it here. Are those really, if, if a student took courses in the sequence of our plan of study, does that overlay correctly? Does that sequence hold true? It also helps you determine, to look at your messaging. What messaging is out there, not only your plan of study, but other messaging in regard to your catalog, your website, that really promotes the truth that you've now identified in the sequence that is the best pathway for students to take the courses in. Um, and then clearly defines, it also clearly defines how foundational knowledge and skills are developed and built upon within the context of your sequence, your program sequence, and how proficiency is determined. And we're going to dig even deeper in another webinar into that proficiency column, but it really does help you see uh, where you're digging deeper, where you're not as well, so that you can identify that, and also where... Um, if that sequence is holding true. And the, the, the handout that's part of this webinar is this curriculum map that you can actually use to do this. So up here, you would do that, you would need to do this for every individual and different program credential certificate that you offer. Uh, you would put that here, but you can see all of the credentials are here. The color coding is still maintaining. So these are level two human growth and development um, competencies level four human growth and development and level five human growth and development and you can see here there's a column where you can indicate a course number where you introduce that competency where you develop that competency and where that competency is assessed or evidence to, of proficiency is is ascertained so the the one thing to be mindful here uh, again as I spoke earlier we use the three courses we use the three columns so that we don't find ourselves saying things like just put that down for every course we do it everywhere even though you do 
you build on it in every course or you may uh, this really makes you think about your program and your path your your uh, your sequence very specifically but please note that you could have one course human growth and development is a great example he, one course that does all of these things for instance a, a child growth and development course could easily introduce this concept of identifying and describing theories of typical and atypical growth in all the developmental domains um, and the individual characteristics, physical health, mental health, cultural practices, etc., that influence growth and development. That could be introduced in a child growth and development course. It could be dug into deeply in the same child growth and development course. And actually, um, proficiency or understanding could be uh, ascertained or assessment of that competency all in the same course. So across here, we might see the same course number. Again, though, another example, for instance, in um, a, a, a curriculum competency or a student's ability to, you know, to, um, to design effective instruction, we might introduce that in an, in an introduction or overview to instructional planning course. We might develop that competency in a specific methods course or multiple specific methods courses in that case like reading methods, science methods, social studies methods, math methods, and then we might actually assess proficiency of that competency in a clinical or student teaching course. So you could see where there could be three different course numbers across here. Uh, I think if, you know, be mindful when you're going beyond three. Uh, sometimes, as I just gave in that example of the methods in this developing column, you might want to give credit to your different methods courses that you get to dig deep very specifically. But that would be, you know, if, if you're finding yourself listing uh, more than three courses across here for every competency, it's probably time to really narrow that because if you don't, this really doesn't become a tool that can be used to guide your messaging, your plan of study, all of that sequencing that we talked about is so important. Um, so we're going to move beyond this. You will. We're going to talk about this column in depth in the next webinar, this assessment kind of column, and actually in multiple webinars to come. So we hope you'll join us for those as well.